السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتدى بسنته لا يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال الله جل وعلا في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل شهر رمضان فتحت أبواب السماء وغلقت أبواب جهنم وسلسلة الشياطين أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honored scholars, my respected elders, beloved brothers, friends and listeners in Islam You know it is a very manifest in the kindness, the benevolence, the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That Allah the Almighty has granted us an opportunity for us to witness this beautiful day of Jumu'ah in this great month of Ramadan so this is only the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to witness that which is known as Sayyidu shuhur the leader of all the months. You know from the beginning of the month of Rajab, we were taught that Sunnah Dua by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which we were reciting for two months that Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan that O oh Allah Grant us barakah and blessings during the month of Rajab and in the month of Sha'ban. وَبَلِّغْنَا Ramadan And make it possible for us to reach the month of Ramadan. So the sign of the acceptance of the dua that we were making prior to this is that Allah has given us life to witness Sayyid al-Shuhur, the lead of all the months. And if you take a look at the manner and the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has attached so many fada'il, and so many virtues to this beautiful month, you will be amazed. That this is known as Shahrul Rahma. It is the month of mercy. Shahrul Dua. It is the month of supplications being accepted by Allah. It is Shahrul Ihsan. It is a month of goodness. Shahrul Jaza. It is the month of you know great rewards being given to individuals. Shahrul, you know, Shahrul Quran. This is the month of the Quran. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the you know in the second juice of the Quran Kareem regarding this month, Shahru Ramadan Alavi Uzila Fil Quran Hudalinas. Allah says Ramadan is the month in which the Quran has been revealed, and this Quran is a means of hidayat and guidance for humanity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this month opens the doors and opens the gates of Jannah and Allah is giving us multitude of opportunities. Allah is giving us multitude of opportunities. It is said that every night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends and Allah makes an i'lan, Allah makes an open declaration. Hal min ta'ibin fa'atuba ilayh. Hal min mustaghfirin fa'aghfira lah. Hal min sa'inin fa'u'tiya lahu su'la. That who is there that wants to seek my forgiveness and make tawbah to me so that I can accept his tawbah and his repentance? Who is there that wants to make istighfar and seek my forgiveness so I can forgive him? Hal min sa'inin lahu su'la. Who is there that got any need so I can fulfill that need of his? In another hadith, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that every night during the, you know, every day and night during the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets free a great number of souls from the fire of Jahannam. Just imagine. And for every Muslim, for every subscriber of the kalima, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, there's a time when his dua is readily accepted by Allah. So shahrud dua, this is a month of dua. Every single one of us seated here and listening to this, we all have needs, we've all got desires, we've all got issues in life, we've got certain things that we want to get fulfilled. So this is the opportunity that Allah is giving us. We know what is happening in Gaza, in Palestine, in many parts of the globe. The difficulties that the Ummah is going. It is our right that on a daily basis we are supposed to be raising our hands when the time where the du'as are accepted. 
And we are supposed to be making dua and supplicating for our brothers and sisters across the globe. In a hadith of, you know, Muslim Sharif, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَا دَخَلَ شَهْرُ الرَّمَضَانِ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ He says, when the month of Ramadan commences, then what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the gates of Jannah. وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ جَهَنَّمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala locks and closes the gates of Jahannam. وَسُلْسِلَةِ الشَّيَاطِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala locks up the shayateen and the devils. So who do we have to blame? But ourselves, if we do not do what we are supposed to do in this month, because Allah is giving us multitude of opportunities. On one occasion, an Arabi and a Bedouin comes to Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know that an Arabi is a person of nomadic background. So he comes to the Nabi of Allah and he says, Ya Rasulullah, show me an action that if I have to do, then I will, becoming, I will, I will become deserving of Jannah. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advises him and he says, Ta'budu Allah, la tushriku bihi shay'a. The first advice that I can give you is that worship Allah, but do not ascribe any partners unto Allah. Allah is wahda, la sharika la. Allah is one and Allah is no partner. And when it comes to shirk and associating partners with Allah, that's one sin that will never be forgiven by Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in Surah An-Nisa regarding this when he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يَشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive that individual that ascribes partners unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second advice that the Nabi of Allah gives us A'radi in this Bedouin is وَتُصَلِّ الصَّلَاةَ الْمَكْتُوبَ They perform the salah in prescribed times. وَتُؤْتِ الزَّكَاةَ الْمَفْرُوضَ And you should discharge of the obligatory charity that is zakat on its time. وَتَصُومُ رَمَضَان And you should fast during the month of Ramadan. Now when this Arab in this bed one hears this, he says, Ya Rasulullah, if this is what you're telling me, then I take a word and I promise that I will not do anything more and I will not lessen what you have told me to do, but I will do exactly what you have instructed me to do. When this man turns around, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells our other companions, مَنْ سَمَّهُ أَنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ إِلَىٰ هَذَا Whoever amongst you wants to see a man, a dweller of Jannah, should look at this man. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His kindness, my respected brothers and friends, is offering us abundance of opportunities. That we need to grab on these opportunities with both hands because we don't know how many more Ramadans are we going to witness. We don't know how much of time we have left in our life. A time is going to come eventually we have to return back to Allah. So one thing is our concept and our mindset regarding the month of Ramadan. But let us take a look at the system that Allah has put in place and how Allah has elevated this month. It is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in one narration that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed and commanded Jannah to be decorated for the month of Ramadan. Now the huge question and the big question is that when did this decoration start? The narration says, إِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ لَتُزَيَّنُوا مِنَ السَّنَةِ إِلَى السَّنَةِ لِدُخُولِ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so basically when the Yilal and the crescent of Eid was sighted last year, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the malaik and the angels to decorate Jannah. For when? For this year's Ramadan. It is said when the month of Ramadan begins, then what happens? There is a wind, a reh, a wind that blows underneath the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the narration makes mention of what is the name of that wind. The name of that wind is known as Muthira. So it flows and it blows underneath the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And فَصَفَّقَتْ وَرَقُ أَسْجَارِ الْجَنَّةِ As a result of that wind, then the leaves of the trees of Jannah start flapping and the door handles of the palaces of Jannah start clattering. So there's a fervor that reverberates throughout Jannah to such an extent, the result of which that Jannah makes a dua. Jannah makes a supplication and a dua. اللهم اجعلنا في هذا الشهر من عبادك سكانا that oh Allah make from the umm of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam such individuals that they will spend the month during this they will spend the time during this month of Ramadan in a way that you will make a decision you will make a decision for them to become the dwellers of Jannah 
Imagine Jannah is making this dua for you and I. If we spend our time correctly during this month, regarding the Hurul Ain, it is said that they also make a dua. And what dua do they make? Allahumma ja'alna fi hadha shahr min ibadika azwaja. That, oh Allah, make from the Ummah and the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam such individuals that will spend their time in the month of Ramadan in a way that you will make the nikah with us. What did my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say regarding controlling our desires within this world? He said, stay away from the haram music of this world and tomorrow in Jannah, Allah will play you an orchestra and what will be the background music of Jannah? It will be the rivers of Jannah, the winds of Jannah, the trees of Jannah. That will be the background music of Jannah. Stay away from the haram women of this world. And tomorrow in Jannah, Allah will grant you the Hurul Ain. Such women of indescribable beauty that the Quran doesn't get tired of describing them. Why? In order for you and I to prepare for that day. How many verses in the Quran Allah speaks regarding the Hurul Ain? وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابَ حُورٌ مَقْصُورَاتٌ فِي الْخِيَامِ وَحُورٌ عِينٌ كَأَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونِ جَزَاءً مِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah speaks about them in such a way, in such an indescribable way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, stay away from the haram music of this world. And tomorrow you will get the orchestra of Jannah. Stay away from the haram women of this, of this world. And tomorrow you will get the whores of Jannah. It is said they will be standing, one will be standing at the head and one will be standing at the feet. And what description is the Nabi of Allah given regarding them? That from the toenail till the knee, they will be created from musk. This is the hurul ayn. From the toenail till the knee, they will be created from musk. From the knee up till the chest, they will be created from amber. From the chest up till the neck, they will be created from za'faran. And from the neck up till the top of the head, they will be created from kafur, from camphor. Khuliqat min sulalatil mins wal amber wal za'faran wal kafur. That they will be created from the mixture, the quintessence of musk, amber, za'faran and kafur. Purity upon purity upon purity. What will their faces be made out of? Nur wajiha min nur illahi ta'ala. The nur of their face will be from the nur of Allah. The nur of their face will be from the nur of Allah. Wallahi, my respected brothers and friends, if you have to go into the tafasir and the commentary of these verses regarding the whores of Jannah, it will be solely impossible for you to understand. But just to scratch the, the surface level, the mufassirin write mutahabbibat mutahashiqat. In layman's understanding, women that will have a PhD in providing love, ecstasy, enjoyment, and halawat and pleasure. Subhanallah. It is said when the whore of Jannah will walk, every time she sways her hips, I see, mashallah, many brothers are smiling. Every time she sways her hips, there will be 100,000 suggestions of ecstasy and pleasure. When she's walking towards you or walking away from you, she will still be looking at you. Why? Because of the pure love that you will have. Love that is not contaminated. No ulterior motive behind it. I'm going to get bucks, I'll get money, so I have to love this man. No, it will be pure love that Allah will place within their hearts. He says if she has to walk in the room that is filled with darkness, the darkness will light up. If one strand of a hair is taken and placed in this dunya, the entire dunya will be, placed, will be, placed with, will, will, will be filled with fragrance. Subhanallah. So Allah has prepared this for you and I. And Allah has given us the opportunity during the month of Ramadan. May Allah make us amongst the dwellers in the people of Jannah. So during this month, my respected brothers and friends, we need to be vigilant of every second and every minute. That we need to spend this time in a way whereby we receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? رُبَّ صَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِن صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعَ وَرُبَّ قَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِن قِيَامِهِ إِلَّا السَّهَرَ That there are many of those, there are many of those individuals who fast during the month of Ramadan and they don't get anything out of it fast if, except for hunger. And many of those who stand up in salah and they don't get anything out of their, you know, standing in salah except for fatigue and tiredness. So why? The reason is because that whilst they're doing this great act in ibadah of fasting, they engage in so many other wrongs. A person, for example, whilst he's fasting, he's backbiting, he's slandering, he's lying, he's deceiving, he's cheating, and he's getting involved in so much of haram 
So instead of him getting the maximum benefit and reward out of that fast, he's actually getting a gulai and a sin. You know, there's one narration, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, that on one occasion the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed the Sahaba and a few other individuals that they should fast and they shouldn't break their fast until the Nabi of Allah had granted them permission. So anyway, with Sahaba it was sami'ana wa ata'ana, we listen and we obey. So throughout the day, the individuals were fasting and somebody would come, Ya Rasulullah, he fasted the entire day, grant me ijazah and permission to break my fast. The Nabi of Allah would grant permission. Another person would come, Ya Rasulullah, he fasted the entire day, grant me ijazah. The Nabi of Allah would grant permission. So there was this particular individual, they came to the Nabi of Allah and he says, you know what, there's two women from your family members that have been fasting the entire day and they're asking, you know, they were too shy to come to you. They are asking for permission to break the fast. The Nabi of Allah remained silent. He didn't say anything to him. So this man again, he requested, Ya Rasulullah, please grant me permission so I can give them that permission. The Nabi of Allah didn't say anything. And after he insisted, the Nabi of Allah says that the entire day they were not fasting. How is it possible that they were fasting when they were consuming the flesh of others whilst they were fasting? So the Prophet says, go back to them and tell them that they should vomit out whatever is in their system. So anyway, the man goes back and he tells him that the Nabi of Allah says you are not fasting and you should vomit out what is in your system. And when they vomited out, there were clots of blood. So the next day, the Sahabi goes back to the Nabi of Allah and he gives him a report back of what had transpired. And the Nabi of Allah says they were very lucky that it came out of their system. Had it remained within them, the fire of Jahannam was going to consume them. So once we are fasting, we need to be very vigilant of how we utilize our tongue. Instead of backbiting, gossiping, rather let us make the dhikr of Allah, make abundance of istighfar, recite the kalima la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. As we know that this is the month of the Quran, recite as much Quran as you can. Because this is the month in which the Quran was revealed regarding Muhammad ibn Idris, Imam Shafi'i rahimullah. I mentioned this before as well. He used to recite one Quran by day and one Quran by night. So in essence, Imam Shafi'i rahimullah used to recite 60 Qur'ans during the month of Ramadan. Even in this present day, there are so many individuals, they finish so many khatams of the Qur'an. So this is the time for us to develop and connect with the, with the Kalam of Allah. As we know that the Qur'an Kareem is a comfort in times of crisis. The Qur'an Kareem is a means of navigation for the lost soul. And the Qur'an Kareem is a means of guidance for humanity. In how many verses of the Qur'an Allah is reminding us, nas, nas. That the Quran is a means of hidayat and guidance for humanity. But we need to make an effort to realize and understand what Allah is telling us in the Quran as well. That the Quran Kareem is not just a book filled with historical events. The Quran Kareem is not just a book of warnings and punishments and laws and regulations. No. But rather, the Quran Kareem is a legacy of love and muhabba. That this is that very same kalam that shook the hearts of kufr, of jahili and ignorance. So many individuals of the past, up till this present day, there are so many individuals that recite one verse of the Qur'an and after that their lives completely transform and change. You know, in the time of the Nabi of Allah, there was a particular man by the name of Tufail ibn Amr al-Dawus radiyallahu an. But the incident I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning is before he accepted Islam. So 10 years after Nubu'i in the Prophethood, Tufail ibn Amr al-Dawus radiyallahu an came into Mecca to al-Mukarrama. Just bear in mind he was a man you know, he was a man of great respect and dignity and honor amongst the people. And he was a very intellectual person. So when he came into Mecca to al the Arab Confederation knew that this is a man of, of great uh, respect and dignity. They gave him a, gave a very warm welcome and a great istiqbal. And after that, they sat down with him and they said, listen here, Tufail, you are a man of great intelligence, but we just want to warn you of a certain individual by the name of Muhammad. He says, you know what, this man Muhammad, since he has come, he has created so much of havoc amongst us. He has separated father from son. He has created so much of hatred amongst the people. And he's a liar, he's a soothsayer, he's a magician. And they're filling his ears with the most negative da'wah. And one thing that we learn from here is that when a person starts calling people towards the wahdaniyat and the oneness of Allah, when a person starts doing good work, then you will create many enemies. Many people will go against you. But at that moment of time, you must realize and understand that's a test from Allah. And you need to continue with istiqamah. Beg Allah to grant you istiqamah and steadfastness. So anyway, they filled his ears with the most negative da'wah. So he's saying, he's narrating this himself. He reached a point where he had to put cotton wool into his, ear, his ears so that he doesn't have to perchance or mistakenly hear the da'wah of the Nabi of Allah. 
So the next day, he was walking in the haram, and he sees Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was performing salah at Baytullah, the Kaaba, and he became intrigued. He wanted to know, okay, you know, what is this man all about? What is he saying? What is his call? So anyway, he comes close to him, and he was unable to what, hear what the Nabi of Allah was saying. He came even closer, then he heard the Nabi of Allah at that time reciting Quran. So he paused for a moment, and he stood for a moment, and he started debating within himself. And he says, you know what, O Tufay, you're such an intellectual man. You're a man of great respect and honor. I mean, you can make the decision for yourself. If this man is saying something wrong, then stay away from it. But if he's saying something good, then take from it. You can distinguish right from wrong, good from evil. So I mean, you know what, make the decision for yourself. So anyway, after that, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after he completed his salah, and he was heading home, Tufayl ibn Amr al-Dawus radiallahu anhu started following the Nabi of Allah. So now as he comes to the house, he's thinking, should I enter, should I knock? And before he could knock, the Nabi of Allah opens the door. And the confrontation takes place. So Tufayl radiallahu anhu says, you know what? My name is Tufayl, I'm from the Dawus tribe. And he was the leader of the Dawus tribe. As I mentioned, he was a very, you know, respected man. And he says, you know, since I came into Mecca to Mukarramah, People have been feeding me with the most negative da'wah regarding you. But you know what? Personally, I want to hear that what are you presenting to the people so I can make, you know, the decision for myself. So the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remember, we are speaking about a Nabi, ghazirun ka ghazirin mirjal. The sound that used to come out of his chest regarding the hidayat of humanity was like a boiling kettle. The Nabi of Allah wanted every recite of the kalima to enter into Jannah. When the Nabi of Allah heard that so and so passed away without iman, the Nabi of Allah used to cry for days. The Nabi of Allah speaks to him regarding the wahdaniyat and the oneness of Allah. And the Nabi of Allah recites Surah Al-Ikhlas for him. When he completes the recitation of Surah Al-Ikhlas, he was a completely changed man after that. There is the magnetic pull of the Quran. There and there he recites the Shahada and accepts Islam. This is the power of the Quran, my respected brothers and friends. So Allah has given us this time and let us utilize this time in a way whereby we can get closer to Allah. Wallahi, time will move very rapidly. The first Ashura is already gone. Before you know it, the Hilal and the Crescent of Eid will be here. It shouldn't be at the end of the month of Ramadan. You know, we all have that regret. I should have done more. We still have time. Let us take on this opportunity. That is why we study the lives of the Ambi alayhi salatu wasalam, the life of the Nabi of Allah, the life of the noble companions, the Salaf al-Saliheen, our pious predecessors. One thing that you will come to notice regarding them is that they did never delayed in executing good amal and actions. They never procrastinated. As they say, procrastination is the thief of time. Procrastination is the devil's favorite word. Tomorrow is the devil's favorite word. They say, shaitan and the devil doesn't have a problem with the good niyyah and intention that a person makes. That you know what, tomorrow I'll start performing my salah. Tomorrow I'll start reciting the Quran. Tomorrow I'll start making the dhikr of Allah. Tomorrow I will change my bad habits. And this is the month of Ramadan. It's a time for us to develop good habits as well. If a person is struggling with controlling his gaze, this is the perfect time for us to bring and implement that good system within us. If a man is struggling to control his tongue, this is the perfect time for us to develop a good habit to control our tongues. So the devil doesn't have a problem with the good knee of a person as long as it's for tomorrow. But when a person wants to effect change now, that is when the devils are trembling within his boots. So that is why we study the verses of the Quran. How many verses of the Quran Allah is encouraging us to move forward? All of these are expressions in the Quran encouraging you and I to move forward when it comes to the execution of good a'mal and good actions. Uqba ibn Harith radiallahu an, one narration comes to mind. He says, one occasion of performing salah in Madinatul Manawara behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it was salatul asr. And after the Nabi of Allah completed his salah, immediately he hastened to one of the homes of his azwaj mutahharat. And now the Sahaba were sitting there and they witnessed this. They were a bit perplexed and shocked. What is happening? We never saw the Nabi of Allah do such an action before. So when the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes back, he could see the confusion in the face of Sahaba. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the reason why I hastened immediately after the salah is because I remember that I had some gold with me. There was meant for sadaqah and to be given out in charity. And I do not want to spend the night with that in my possession. First, We should never delay. How many times when it comes to important aspects of the deen, example, the discharging our zakat, we take it very lightly. When it comes to laws of inheritance in mirath, we take it lightly. We don't have much time on this earth. Every one of us, we are on a journey from Allah to Allah. 
And any moment this journey can come to an end. What have we prepared for the day that we are going to meet Allah? One Sahabi comes to the Nabi of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, please inform me, what is the best charity? What is the best sadaqah? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the best charity is the charity that you give when you're healthy, when you're stingy, and you've got fear of poverty. You've got fear of poverty. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you should not delay your charity and give it out in the path of Allah to the extent where we are about to pass away, now you summon and call everyone. You know what, you come here, you come here, this is for you, that is for you. Lo and behold, it already belongs to them. As soon as we close our eyes, that which we work for for so many years will become the inheritance of somebody else. That is the reality of this world, my respected brothers and friends. So this is a month that we have to try and see how we can connect with Allah. We should do as much as we can so that we don't have a regret at the end of Ramadan. As Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ameen to that dua that was made by Sayyiduna Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. That woe and destruction be for that individual that finds the month of Ramadan but does not get himself forgiven by Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to execute good a'mal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to perform our salah in a manner that is pleasing to Allah. May Allah grant us the ability to recite the Quran in a way that will bring the pleasure of Allah. And really my respected brothers and friends, we know what is happening in Gaza and Palestine. Whatever we have, let us make shukran, let us be grateful to Allah. Let us raise our hands and let us make dua for them. When we are sitting in the comforts of our homes and we are partaking of our meals at the time of iftar, think about those individuals that are walking kilometers. Kilometers and they don't even know where the next meal is going to come from. They have no fresh water to drink. As I'm standing here and you're listening to me, so many bodies have been pulled out underneath the ground from the rubble. So many individuals have lost their parents. Innocent children don't know where, in which direction to go. Children are crying for their parents. Parents are crying for their children. Everything has been destroyed. They don't know what is going to happen in the next minute. So whatever we have, we need to develop the attitude of gratitude. And we need to come out of this habit of complaining of what we don't have. And we need to start learning how to be grateful for what we have. Because wallahi, we have got so much that we are ungrateful for. Let it not be that Allah questioned us on the day of Qiyamah because of our ungrateful nature. That is why in so many verses in the Quran, Allah complains about insan. Qutilan insan ma akfara. Qutilan insan ma akfara. How ungrateful is insan? Allah is saying, how ungrateful is insan? Min ayyi shay in khalaqa. Then Allah says, from what is insan being created from? Then those of us who are familiar with the rules of tajweed, the God in the person that is reciting is, you know, uh, he should make work and he should stop when he comes to this part of the ayah. Then Allah says, min nutfa. That you have been created from a droplet of worthless fluid. So in many verses in the Quran, Allah complains about you and I. So we need to develop the attitude of gratitude. We need to sit down with our children. We need to educate them. Educate them on what is going on. And every single one of us, this is the time of change. Well, life, we don't see this as a means or a time for us to change. When are we going to change? When are we going to bring a change in our lives? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me the ability to bring change in my life. And every single one of us, wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.